In this video, we're going to discuss the five key pieces of advice that were given to me early in my architecture career that doubled my architect salary and got me promoted again and again. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the skills that will increase your salary as a cloud architect, as an enterprise architect, as an AI architect. And these are things that will dramatically enhance your capabilities as an architect, your salary as an architect, as well as your architecture career and really help get you promoted. Now, early in my IT architecture career, when I was a network architect, I didn't really think of these things. And as soon as my mentor kind of told me these things, I undertook them very quickly and the trajectory of my career went from this to this. So I want to share those with you because I want your cloud architect career or enterprise architect to be career to be great. The first piece of advice that was given to me early in my network architecture career was uh, to focus on the transformation and not the tech. Now, that was a different approach. I was thinking of the routers and the switches and all the cool technology that excited me. And when my mentor had said to me, Mike, look at the solution, look at the end outcome, where does that business want to be? Then work backwards. Think about the people, the processes, and technology. He said, change the way you do your architecture, focus on the outcome, and then work backwards. Well, wow, that changed thing for me because now I was innovating. I was innovating based upon the business's needs. Now, why does this matter? Most architects, most cloud architects, network architects, they typically think of the technology and they design the technology, but now they're de designing technology for an unknown target. And uh, 70 to 80% of the time, these architectures where people just focus on the tech and not the business processes and the people, they actually fail to provide any business value. So I had no idea at the time how important this advice was, but it truly changed my careers and it changed the results I got my client. Now, the next piece of advice that was given to me is the secret to architecture is to good relationships with stakeholders. Stakeholders are key. So when this was first taught to me, I was like, first, what is a stakeholder and why do I need to think about this? So the stakeholders are going to be, for the most part, anybody that's got a stake in the business. So it's going to be the leadership, could be business unit managers, could be key leaders in various departments. These are going to be people that are going to have a lot of industrial knowledge. They're going to be very important to you. So Here's why they're gonna matter. Well, first, when you wanna sell your architecture to the client, if the stakeholders don't agree and you don't have their buy-in, you're not selling the architecture, which will affect your salary long-term and your career very negatively long-term. So make sure the stakeholders are on board. Now, the second thing is the stakeholders are actually the key to making the solution do something for the client. See, the stakeholders, the experts on the business. They know the business's challenge, the business's pain points, and the business's needs. And when you work collaboratively with the stakeholders to get their input, your architecture is better. And then when you think you have a proposed architecture, you bring it back to the stakeholders and get their feedback, and you tune it back and forth until the architecture is going to really drive results to your client. Optimize their client's business performance in whatever they're trying to do. If they're a hospital and they're trying to get their patients out quicker, with uh, that, that would be optimized business performance. If they're a hospital and they're trying to have less hospital acquired infections that's enhancing their business performance so whatever we're trying to do all of it is the key is to make that customer's business better in some way whatever problem they're trying to solve so that's the key to getting the client to adopt the right architecture and the architecture to do something now the next piece of advice that was given to me early in my architecture career and it made a big difference for me was to be a master of something and here's the thing enterprise architecture cloud architecture these are jack of all trades careers because you need to know a lot about a lot of things. You need to know a lot about business. You need to know a lot about networking, data center, compute, storage, AI. I mean, the list could go on forever. And we need to know a little bit about all of it, about how the technology works and how it fits together. But if you're an expert in something, you're going to stand out from the crowd. So initially, uh, you know, I, I focused on designing systems for internet service providers and banks, and that was fine. I knew how to do it. And then after I heard this, to be an expert at something, I thought about what could I really be an expert at? And then I remembered, you know, I'm a nurse practitioner. I practiced internal medicine. Prior to that, I was a nurse. Prior to that, I was a paramedic. So I have a good knowledge 
of the healthcare delivery system, how the patients come in, how they work, how the nurses work in different departments, how the doctors do their job, how the operating rooms are scheduled. So I knew that. So I moved into a healthcare architect role. And that moved me into a bigger enterprise architect role and a bigger enterprise architect role and a bigger enterprise architect role until ultimately I was the chief architect for the healthcare vertical at Cisco. And it was bigger and bigger and bigger. So, you know, that's the key is when you're an expert at something, you can truly help that industry more. I was obviously a greater asset to the healthcare industry knowing the, the, the day in the life of a nurse and the day in the life of a physician than I would have been if I just had a good tech background. So try to find one thing that you're an expert in. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be an industry. It could be a various type of technology and what that technology can do for business. But you got to be a jack of all trades, but a master of one. Not a jack of all trades and a master of none. You've got to be a jack of all trades and a master of one. Now, this next piece of advice that was not obvious to me, and quite frankly, it can be the biggest impact to your skills. I was told to increase my business acumen. I was like, what is business? I was, which is business knowledge. And the better your business knowledge, the better your business acumen, the better of a cloud architect or enterprise architect you're going to be. And here's the reason why. The whole reason clients are bringing us in is they've got some kind of business challenge and they want us to solve that challenge. So if you know business, you're going to be much better prepared to solve a business challenge than if you didn't know business. And uh, the side effect of knowing business better is your clients are going to get greater results. You're going to be more uh, relevant to your client when you talk to your client about architectures, which means you're going to sell more architectures. You'll, you'll close more of those deals uh, with the account managers. And you're now going to be seen as a strategist, not a techie. And if we're talking about something that can enhance your salary, we're talking here, business acumen right here. So spend a lot of time here. I mean, I took this to new levels. I went and did an MBA and I got a tremendous amount of business education and leadership education and executive education outside of those because it was a big thing for me and it had a big impact on my salary. Now, the last one, you know, was semi-obvious to me, but not as obvious as it needed to be. And that was when my mentor said to me to increase my leadership skills if I wanted to be a better cloud architect, enterprise architect, network architect. They didn't say cloud architect in those days. I'm adding cloud architect. But the key was this. Early in my career, I thought architecture was me designing a solution. And when it got a little more complicated, it was me and two buddies designing a solution. So it was like a three-person architecture team, max. And I worked real hard on those architectures. And when I look back at those architectures, I'm not proud of them. Sure, they all work, but I could have done a much better job. And then after I started getting some leadership skills and I took a lot of leadership development training and I did a lot of leadership development practice, the next thing I realized, I now had a bigger team. And instead of a team of one to three, I was now leading architecture teams of 15 to 50. So in my big enterprise architecture teams, now I'm leading a big team. Now I'm working on massive architectures, the kind of architectures that the CEO of the companies know about and they know when you win. So you want to talk about something that can also drive your career and that's having better leadership skills because now you can lead a team of 50, which means you can be much more effective and you can deliver much bigger things. So to summarize, what were those five things that were taught to me that really cr made crushed my enterprise architecture career and made it blow up like a rocket ship? And that was to focus on the transformation, not the technology and work backwards from the end goal uh, to the ultimate solution. The second piece of information is architecture is all about speaking with stakeholders, managing stakeholder expectations, and getting their buy-in. So stakeholder management is key. The third was to be a master of something. Find something that you're passionate about and become an expert at it. Become a thought leader. Become great. Something that you want to know about and that you're passionate about. The fourth one is to increase your business acumen because if you want to be a great cloud architect, enterprise architect, security architect, network architect, I don't care. The reason people are coming to you is because they want an enhancement to their business. And the more you know about business, the better you'll be able to help them with their architectures that desire business results. 
And the, uh, the last one is to increase your leadership skills. So it follows the African proverb. Uh, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. The key to leadership and cloud architect leadership and enterprise art leaders, architect leadership is you want a big team of specialty architects and specialists to make sure what you're going to do is going to be great, drive business value, and provide some real digital transformation. If you'd like to become a cloud architect, a network architect, an AI architect, or a security architect, we have uh, free resources for you in the description of this video, as well as a free architecture webinar. And on this free webinar, which we invite you to, it'll be on Zoom. We'll go over the architectural roles. We'll talk about the skills that you need, and we'll answer any question you have about architecture careers, and it's live and free on Zoom. Come join us. There's one each week. Uh, the link is in the description below. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to assist you in your cloud architect career, enterprise architect career, security architect career, AI architect career, or honestly, any architect career. Take care, and I look forward to seeing you in a new video.